Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printing here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to use the login view in Django. So this login view is going to allow us to create our own page where users can log in instead of using the default admin login that Django comes with. So I already have a project set up here. I'm not going to create any sub apps. Normally you would, but just to keep this simple, I'm going to put everything here in this login example directory. And there are only a couple of things that I need to add. So the first thing I need to do is I need to migrate so I can get the database. And then I want to create a super user so I can have a user that I can actually test this login system with. So Anthony will be the username. Anthony at prettyprinted.com will be the email address. The password's going to be password 11 and I feel like I typed that wrong. Oh, I didn't. And then let me start up the server to make sure I can actually log into the admin dashboard. So this is the login screen for the admin dashboard, but I don't want to use this. What I want to do is instead is I want to create my own. So to do that, the first thing I need to do is I need to bring in a login template. So I should have that on my clipboard. So if I go to login example and create a new directory called templates, the thing that I'm using, the login view that I'm using is going to be looking for a template in the registration folder. So I need to create that here. And remember when you create templates in Django, all the template directories across all your apps will be combined. So in one of those template directories, you need to have a directory called registration. If you're using the defaults, you can always change the location of the template. But uh, for my purposes, I'm just going to use the, um, the normal one. So let me go ahead and find where I put this file because I can't remember. So this is it, just dragged it over. And if I open this up in VS Code, we will be able to see what it looks like. So it's a very simple HTML form. So what I want to do now is I want to introduce the login view. So I'll go to my URLs.py and we see in my URL patterns, I already have admin. So I want to create another path and this path is going to be for my login endpoint. So I'll create it now, path, and then login slash. And now what I want to do is I want to specify the view that is for login. So this is actually a view that comes from Django if I'm using the login view from Django. And you probably should unless you have something that you know doesn't quite match a typical login case. So this is going to be from Django.contrib, and I just spelled that wrong, .contrib auth going to import views and because views is so common what I do is use auth views so I just give an alias of auth views so you're importing the views from django.contrib.auth uh, you don't necessarily need to use views instead you can get the login view direct directly so what I can do is dot views and then import login view. If I were using more than one view, I use the first approach, but since I'm only using the login view in this example, I'm going to import it directly. So I have login view here. So this is now the view and it's a class based view. So I can put login view and then dot as view to get it to work. And then that's it. So now when I run my app, if I go to login, I will see my login page. So server restart it. If I go to slash login, so we see that template does not exist and this should be just adding this app to the project. So this isn't a true app in a sense. I'm just doing this to keep it simple, but uh, this is, you know, the app that they give you. So I'm just adding this so I can get access to that template. So I'll refresh and we see I have the template that I created. So this is what it looks like when you actually view it rendered. So as of right now, it doesn't do anything. If I click login, nothing happens. And then I can type a username and a password, nothing happens. So to update this, what I'll do is I'll go back to the templates directory and I just need to make some minor changes. The first thing I need to do is I need to put the uh, URL for the form. So the form action. So the method is going to be post and the action is going to be from Django. So I'm just going to get the URL for login, just like that. So now when I submit this, 
Uh, no reverse match at login. Uh, I just need to give this a name then. So as view and then name equals login just so I can get that reverse. So let's try that again. And my app crashed and that's because I put this in the wrong spot. This should be outside of the view. So name, login, just like that. And now this should work when I start my server again. Okay, so now we see that the form is working again. So now when I click login, it tells me forbidden uh, CSRF verification failed. So to get past that, what I need to do is I need to add in the cross-site request forgery token here, just like that. So if I go login and hit login, now nothing happens because I'm not logging in properly. So it's actually returning some errors to me. So if I do this form dot errors, we should be able to see something when I click that submit. So I see username, this field is required, password, this field is required. Um, that's because I'm obviously not supplying the information. And even if I did supply the information, it still wouldn't work because these fields don't have any names on them. So now what I need to do is I need to make sure that I am using the correct fields that are given to me in this template. So I can replace, for example, username with form.username.label underscore tag. And if I do that, let's see if anything changes. The only thing that changes is it adds a little colon for me. So that's not really a big deal. If I remove this text and I replace it with form.username, that will give me the username field. So the input's going to look exactly the same because just it's a basic text input. And then if I do the same for password, so what I'll do is I'll remove these completely so you see that they go away. So the password field is no longer there. And what I'll do is I will put the password label, so label tag, and then the password field. And something, oh, there should be a dot there instead of an underscore. So now we see it pretty much looks like it did originally. So now the form actually works. So if I type in something, I see that I get a new error. It's a, it says, please enter correct username and password. And the reason why it's telling me this is because there is no username of KSD and whatever I type there. So instead, what I'll do is I'll use my actual username, Anthony, that I created as a super user. And then the password will be password 11. So if I click login now, it's telling me page not found. So it's telling me that this uh, account slash profile isn't found. And the reason why it's telling me that is because I don't have the login redirect URL set up. So just at the bottom of my settings, I'll add a login redirect URL. And in this case, I'll just use admin. And now if I go to login and type my username and password, it redirects me to the admin dashboard. So we see I was able to create my own login screen and get it to redirect to wherever I want. So in a real application, you probably wouldn't have the login screen redirect to the admin dashboard because I think the existing login screen for the admin dashboard works. But if you had other functionality on your site that required users to be logged in, then you would redirect them to the place that made the most sense. So if they had a profile, you'd probably redirect them to the profile. Um, some like to redirect to the location that they were. In that case, you would use the value next and perhaps I'll create a video on that. But um, it just depends on your app and what you're doing, but you'll probably have a specific place that you will want to redirect the users after they log in. So you can use the login redirect URL for that if it's a static place. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to cover the basics of using the login form in Django. Um, in a future video, I'll show you how to customize it a bit more so you can get it to match the styles of your template if you are using styles that are a little more complicated, like you have classes and placeholders on the inputs. In this particular example, I just used CSS to modify what the inputs look like so I didn't have to do anything to the inputs themselves, but sometimes you do. 
So if you have any questions about this, you can always leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.